Hey guys, I want to show you how to use Webflow's API and specifically with Zapier. Now, you can do this with Postman, uh, a little app that you can download, but a lot of times people want to actually use it with Zapier, so I want to show you how. So the first thing to do is to open up Webflow's API reference right here. And this is just developers.webflow.com. And when you scroll down, the first thing that you have to do is you have to load your sites in here. So you get this uh, URL, and you can just grab that, and you're going to throw it in. So where do I throw it in here? So you might think, uh, look for like a get request. No, there's nothing for there. Well, it's under webhooks by Zapier. And so if you click on webhooks, you're going to be like, okay, I want to get some information. I want to get request, but I don't see anything right here. And that's right, because normally what happens with Zapier is that you're waiting for an action to happen, so a form submission. And then so that, that information is coming in, that's triggered, um, a Zap, a sort of workflow. <clears throat> but uh, to get the information we need to interact with the Webflow API, we have to go out and get this thing. So we actually have to uh, not do a webhook, but we need to do a schedule by Zapier. And you can just throw anything in here every week, whatever, because we're not actually setting things up. We're just using it to make a get request. Test the trigger, and this is just the information that we received about what date we set up, so that doesn't matter. Okay, so every week I want to do something, and what I want to do is do a get request. And so once again, that's under webhooks. Okay. And what I want to do is here you can see now, now we have a normal get request. Okay. So now I've got that URL, api.webflow.com slash sites. And so we're going to throw this in here and great. Let's call it. Uh, and let's do that. And nothing. I, we got our error here. It could not be sent. The app returned no API version specified on request. Because if you think about it, I'm just sending a bare uh, request to this. I'm trying to get some information about my website, but I'm just saying to the general sites. And so it's saying, well, you need to add some more information so I know that it's like your site and you're allowed to use this API. So if you scroll down here on this right side, I'm under shell here if it doesn't pop up. It says, I need to uh, send a get request here, but I need two dash H's, two headers, additional information you pass along. And I need this like authorization bear thing, which is like your password or technically your API key. And then you need to say what version of this whole API I'm using, which is 1.0.0. Okay, so let's add this stuff in. So I'm going to copy this authorization thing, and you come down to headers right here, not uh, query string parameters. And I just paste that sucker in. And the colon, this can be a little bit confusing, is in between here. So you don't add it in. I'm going to add this bearer space. It adds it in for me, which is nice. And then I need this thing. Well, I don't want this thing. That's just an example one. That's not real. So I have to go to my project settings here. And so this is um, my, my project right here. I'm under integrations. And I need to generate a new API token because I've already messed with this one. If you haven't done it, you can just generate it when you see this. Um, sort of warning here, but I'm just going to get a new one. And so API keys generated, and I'm going to copy that guy, and I'm going to throw it in here. Great. Then the other thing I needed is to say what version, and so I'm just going to copy this header right here. And it is always copy, so I don't screw anything up. Great. So now I'm going to continue 
And the one thing is, it, it might seem like you've you've run the request, but you actually haven't yet. You got to test and review it. it this will be, um, and so there we go. So now we're getting closer to be able to use it. And so I just sent a, uh, sent a sent a request to sites. Remember, and so it's showing all the sites that I on my Webflow account that I have generated that API token for. And it's just this one right now. If you have multiple sites that you've done that, then you'll see multiple things right here. And what we care about here is we care about this ID because I'm going to need that to access any information, any of my like CMS collections in uh, my with the API. So I'm going to copy that. And what do I need to do now? What do I need to put that? Well, I want to look at some collections. So I want to list collections. And so here, once again, I come down in the documentation and says, you know, this slash is like the dot com. Okay, that's where we are. Dot com slash sites. And then here's where I put my site ID. So let's put this in. I'm going to go back to the customize requests. And I want sites slash paste in my ID slash collections. Great. This all stays the same. Test. And now I can see collections. And I've got collections alert bar. Okay. So let's come in here and take a look at this. Oh, I've got this alert bar. So the one thing that you should know when you're using... Um, uh, Zapier here is that it truncates the request. If you do the same request in Postman or in the terminal or something, you'll see all of it. Now it's there, you, um, but it'll just truncate it and give you the first one. So now let's say, um, um, so I've got this CMS collection and now I can do things with it, right? I can uh, interact with it in different ways. You can also come over to your other CMS collection, say blog post here, and click on the gear and get this collection ID right here. So if I copy this, I'm going into an individual collection. So let's look at, let's say I want to get the items out of there, get all items for a collection. So now I change the URL, and they change it so that you don't get this like enormously long URL. So collections, collections ID, that's our number and then items. Okay, let's look at that. Go back to our request. So we're going collections, um, collections ID, which is boop. And then I want to say items. Everything's the same. Continue. Remember, you got to test and review. And now I can see all of these things. So when I move on to my different steps, in my zap, I can access all this information. So each one of these numbers gives uh, is all the information that you can access from the API. So then you can just move throughout through this, and you can access all these informations. You understand how to do it. Now, um, in the next video, we are going to look at um, some more advanced features with using the API. So uh, check it out.